External monitor support is back in the beta and I'm really excited for it. I use it a ton and I wanna walk you through how it works. This video is sponsored by Omaze. So for external monitor support at the time of recording this, the, the supported iPads are the M series iPads. So the ones with the M1 chip or the M2 chip, whether it's the iPad Pro or the iPad Air, doesn't matter as long as it has the M series chip, you're good to go. You also need to have iPadOS 16.2 installed. Now, at the time of recording this and releasing this, it is in beta right now. You can sign up for the public beta if you wish. Big caveat on that public beta means, hey, the software is not finished, so you could get crashes. There could be things that happen. This is just my general warning. And as far as the monitors that work with it, you can go all the way up to 6K. You can use the Pro Display XDR with the iPad. So I use the studio display. Now you don't have to use the studio display. You can use just about any monitor you want. Like I haven't seen a monitor that's not supported. Even those big ultra wide monitors, you can use those. It also doesn't have to just be USB-C or Thunderbolt connection. You can adapt either HDMI or DisplayPort to it if you want. When you plug in your iPad to an external monitor, you need to have a keyboard and mouse paired in order for true external monitor support to come up. Now, this could be the Magic Keyboard or this could be a third party mouse and keyboard. It it could be any combo you wish. It doesn't have to be like specifically an Apple device, but you do have to have a mouse and keyboard paired with the iPad. And that makes sense considering like if you're working at a desk, you're not gonna be like hovering over the touch screen and doing that. Like it, it, it makes sense, I get that. When using external monitor support, Stage Manager is not optional. Stage Manager is optional on the iPad. When you're just working from the iPad, you can use the classic split view mode, or you can switch into stage manager if you wish. But once you plug it into an external monitor, on the external monitor, stage manager is your only option. There is no split view. Now, that being said, you can keep stage manager off on your iPad when plugged into an external monitor. So that way on the external monitor, you have stage manager, but on the iPad, you have split view. But personally, I just leave Stage Manager on my iPad on all the time. That way I can just have four apps open at any given time. Stage Manager works the same on the external monitor as it does on the iPad. So if you've seen my iPad OS 16 walkthrough, you know how it works as far as Stage Manager goes. I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can check it out if you haven't seen it. But the biggest annoyance of external monitor support with Stage Manager is the iPad's whole like, windowing grid position. So windows can only be certain sizes, they can only be in certain positions as well. The, the whole snap to a grid thing is still there. Honestly, it's really annoying on an external monitor because you have this really big canvas, but it feels like you only have a few active areas that you can actually work. I mean, obviously you can make an app full screen or take up as much of the screen as you want, but it's those predetermined points. And when you drag a window, it's to set points. And I really wish Apple would get rid of that on Stage Manager altogether. This video is sponsored by Omaze. I'm really excited to partner with Omaze and give you a chance to win an eco-friendly Tesla Model X Plaid Edition by supporting a great cause, Reverb. Omaze launched with a mission to transform charitable giving. To date, they have raised over 150 million dollars for charity. And their long-term goal is to raise $1 billion yearly for charity. That's awesome. So with this sweepstakes, you have a chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid Edition. This is an eco-friendly electric car. It seats up to seven people, has a panoramic glass roof, 17 inch infotainment screen, 22 speaker surround sound, plus rear seat screens for wireless gaming, and of course, the wing doors. With this, you also have the ability to support Reverb. Reverb is leading the green music movement since 2004. Reverb partners with artists, festivals, venues to reduce their environmental footprint. They've raised over $3 million to fight the climate crisis. Enter for your chance to win at omaze.com forward slash Christopher Lolly. It's incredibly easy to do. My thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about how I've been using the external monitor setup. So I started using it way back when the first beta of iPadOS 16 came out. Later in the summer, it got pulled and pushed to iPadOS 16. So there was a little bit of a gap in there where I wasn't able to use it, but it is back now. 
Uh, and honestly, I've been using an external monitor with my iPad for years now, and I would use it in the old mirror mode. So basically what it was is you get these two pillar boxes on the side and just whatever was on your iPad would get reflected on the external monitor screen. In fact, I was using it way before there was even trackpad support. What I was doing is I was putting my iPad in front of the monitor so I could still tap on the screen, but when I was writing, I would have a more ergonomic desk setup. And that's kind of what brings me to this. I've been covering the iPad now for almost six years on YouTube. And without fail, in almost every single video you see me writing or working on the iPad, you, I see some people talk about how it doesn't look very ergonomic. And it's not. And now part of that is I kind of hunch over a little more in videos so that I can get myself in the shot and stuff because I have a very small office. It's hard to film in here. But with external monitor support, I'm able to sit at my desk, look up properly, you know, sit in my chair properly, have my back straight and work. And uh, it's really nice. And I'm able to pair it with the accessories I want to use. So uh, I've gotten very into mechanical keyboards this year. I've always liked mechanical keyboards, but I've gotten very into custom mechanical keyboards. My current favorite is the Mode 80. Uh, so I'm using that one right now at my desk. Uh, it's really nice to work on and it's just, I like mechanical keyboards because of their feel and their clickiness, and there's just something in my brain that it clicks with that. Oh, I love it. And then I also use the Magic Trackpad for my cursor. I, I honestly wouldn't be using this if it wasn't for two things. One, all the gestures the Magic Trackpad gives you, there's nothing else that can match all the gestures because Apple makes the Magic Trackpad so they can build gestures for it in the OS. And the other thing is third-party mouses just don't work very well on iPad OS. I don't know why. It's always been like that ever since, uh, you know, trackpad and mouse support came to the iPad. Third-party mouses have never worked very well with the iPad. So when I'm working at my desk with my iPad plugged in, I don't really use the iPad screen for like apps or anything like that. I just leave it on my home screen because then I have a status board of widgets. What's kind of strange about external monitor support is you, on the external monitor, when you're on the home screen, you cannot put anything on the external monitor's home screen. You can't put widgets, apps, nothing. Nothing can go there. So... I use the iPad as kind of a status board. So I have my calendar, weather app, uh, task manager, time tracking, shortcuts, battery health, and parcel my delivery tracking app. I did all that off the top of my head. All of those apps have relevant information for me throughout the day. So when I'm just working at my iPad, it's nice to just be able to glance over, see my task manager, calendar, whatever. Now, that being said, I would prefer a clamshell mode. I think it just makes for a cleaner desk setup. I am somebody that just prefers having one monitor because I have ADHD. I ha I've been in the position where I've had like three or four monitors and it's just, it's too much for me personally. I, I know there are some people that can't work without it, but I am somebody that it's like, it's just, it's, it's a little too much for me. So I would love to have clamshell mode, but there is no clamshell mode for iPad. Where external monitor support has just really come in handy is for a lot of creative projects. So I use my iPad to edit photos. So I've been, you know, I'll open up Lightroom, make it really big. I have a nice big canvas. Now I use the studio display. So that means I get a nice retina monitor with good color accuracy. So I just use it to edit photos. It's a nice big 27 inch canvas. It works perfect for me. The other thing is writing projects uh, cause that ties into the whole ergonomic desk setup. I honestly think the thing I do the most sitting at my iPad is writing and research. So just being able to do that at a more ergonomic desk setup, because I can do that for hours and hours and hours uh, a day. Like it, I spend a ton of time writing and researching. And then the other thing is just displaying apps, more apps. Uh, with an external monitor, you can have a big canvas. So in my case, I have a 5K 27 inch canvas. So I can spread out more apps on an external monitor than I can on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The external monitor support just kind of like plays into the thing that I've talked about for years and years and years now, the modularity of the iPad. So the iPad started off as a tablet and then it was a tablet for a good long while. And then iOS 9 came out and we got like true keyboard support. Like you got keyboard shortcuts and all that stuff, which was nice. So it was kind of a pseudo laptop. 
Then the iPad Pro came and we got the Apple Pencil. And now you have a tablet and a pencil, so you have a canvas to write on. And then we got trackpad support. So then you got like the Magic Keyboard, which made the iPad a true laptop by every sense. And I know there's gonna be somebody, oh, it's not a laptop, it's not a computer because it's an iPad. It is a computer, it computes data. And then now we have external monitor support, which brings us to like the 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 last big piece of modularity that I, at least I've been waiting for. So like the iPad is this all-in-one computer. It can adapt to whatever you need it to be. And that is something I really like about the iPad. It adapts to my workflow uh, hardware-wise. Some software, it, it needs a little work on the software side, but hardware-wise, it adapts to my workflow. So there's some hardware I've been using with this to kind of make external monitor support work a little better. Uh, I should already have put out the video on the Lab 22 Infinity Adjust iPad stand, but I've been using this iPad stand next to my monitor. I've been putting my iPad up there so that way I can have my iPad at a good height so I can see all those widgets. If you want a more traditional iPad stand, something that doesn't adjust a bunch, you can look at something like the Mag Float. I've talked about that one a bunch on here. That one works really well at propping your iPad iPad up at a good height, it magnetically attaches, so that's good. Then there's also like one of my all time channel favorite uh, uh, products, the Lamacall laptop stand. It's not expensive, it's, it's fairly cheap for what it is. It's adjustable, it's height, tilt, and rotate adjustable. And it's really meant for a laptop. So you're gonna need something like um, the Magic Keyboard to put it on so you can get a, a laptop stand to kind of prop it up. OWC's Thunderbolt hub. Now, really, you could just use about any USB or Thunderbolt hub. This is just the one that I have. If you need to get more ports, this is a great way to do it. There's a bunch of different options. What's nice about this one is it gives you three extra Thunderbolt ports, Ethernet, three USB-A ports, USB 2.0, SD card, headphone jack, and then the, the USB-C port on the front or Thunderbolt port on the front is that goes to your computer. Um, there's a ton of different options like these out there. This is the one I own. I really like what they did with this, but if you just need more ports when working on an external monitor, there are options out there like this. Now, one thing I do find extremely weird about external monitor support, especially considering the timing of everything, you cannot use third-party or external webcam on the iPad when using external monitor support. So even on the studio display, the monitor Apple makes, I can't use the webcam on that with my iPad. I find that to be a very interesting choice. So that means if I am having a video call, I can't be looking at my external monitor because that means somebody's gonna be seeing me from the side and it's gonna look like I'm not paying attention to them. So I have to turn and look at my iPad and stuff like that. It's rather annoying. What I find interesting is in iPad OS 16, we got driver kit now. So there really shouldn't be much of a reason not to support webcams, especially the uh, studio displays webcam on the iPad. Now, that being said, I know most web cameras are worse than the front facing camera of the iPad, including the studio display. Like the, the, the front facing camera of the iPad is better than the studio displays webcam, but it's more about convenience and like, Hey, I'm looking at the external monitor. So I want that to be the webcam that's being used. So it looks like I'm paying attention to the call and I'm talking to the person and I'm not ignoring them because I'm looking at my external monitor and my webcams over here. So there are some improvements I would like to see. Obviously the webcam thing is one of them. Freely movable and resizable windows is the other big one. I talked about that in my iPad OS 16 walkthrough. Um, get rid of the four window cap. I honestly don't really get why there's a four window cap on the iPad. If it truly is a technical limitation, then give us clamshell mode and let us close up the iPad and give us eight windows on the external monitor then. Because the iPad can run eight windows or eight apps at a single time because you can have four apps on your iPad and four apps on your external monitor. If they did do the clamshell mode, one thing that would be really beneficial is sell an external touch ID button. A few months ago, a whole project was going around. Somebody took apart an external magic keyboard and actually made like a touch ID sensor out of it, like 3D printed a case and stuff like that. So all they had is a touch ID sensor sitting on their desk. And that's a really cool idea. I've thought about doing it, just haven't had the time, but honestly, if Apple just sold an external touch ID sensor, I, I'd, I'd buy one. I'd, I'd buy two if I had to. 
When you open a new app, have it open in the same stage you're already in. This is the thing that is just driving me and a lot of people I talk to wild, just up the wall, that every time I open an app, it opens a new stage, so I'm having to do a bunch of dragging and dropping to get stuff into the same stage. Just let me open everything into one stage. And then the last thing I wanna see improved, and this one's kind of frustrating, is when you plug your iPad into a monitor, it sets the audio output to be the monitor at that point. Now, in the when you're just on the iPad, no, no external monitor, you can go into control center, long press on the now playing screen, and you can switch your audio output if you have multiple outputs. So say you have headphones on, but you wanna switch it to the iPad speakers. You can, you can switch it back, you can do that. But when you plug it into an external monitor, the monitor takes over the audio output. So where this gets really frustrating is if you have like say speakers plugged into the OWC hub, or if you have what I do, I have an audio interface and sometimes I'll plug big speakers into that, but I also have my studio monitor headphones on there. Uh, and I have to go in and physically unplug my audio interface and then plug it back in after the iPad's already been plugged into the external monitor to get it to see that, hey, use this as your audio output because basically it uses the last device connected as the audio output. Super frustrating. Now, that being said, if you're just using Bluetooth headphones, AirPods, whatever, you can still go into Control Center, the audio output option, and change them to AirPods if you want. That still works. But if you have like desk mounted speakers, you're probably going to have some issues unless they're plugged directly into your monitor. So that's it for my external monitor video. Let me know what you guys think of external monitor support in the comments below. My thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go to omaze.com forward slash Christopher Lolly. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.